Welcome back guys. In this video, we're going to talk about the three core principles for reality creation and manifesting. Those are the three things that you must know in order to simplify the process of manifesting and creating what you want. Manifesting, creating what you want is simple, but it's not easy because the mind has a tendency to get in the way, a tendency to overcomplicate, a tendency to doubt, a tendency to overthink everything and slow the process and make it more complicated than necessary. So those three principles, if you apply them, if you keep them very practical and if you simply abide by them, you will see how they make everything so much more simple for your life, for creating what you want. And so let's go straight into the first core principle. And this is simply knowing what do you want, right? To know your outcome and to be able to visualize or to affirm, to create a mental picture of exactly what you want as if it's already done. And this is done to impress your mind with what you want. If your mind is like a GPS, right? You need a clear destination that you can implant into the program so that you can let your mind find a way to go there. So the process of visualizing or affirming or scripting or whatever tool or process or technique that works best for you that you feel most comfortable with is required to implant your mind, especially your subconscious mind, with the new direction, with the new outcome, with the new timeline, whatever you want to call it, that you want to experience, that you want to bring into your reality. So you got to be able to think greater. You got to be able to know your outcome. You got to be able to think from the end process and see the mental images that you want to have ahead of time, no matter what is happening in your current situation right now, right? One of the main challenges here is to be able to pay attention to the thoughts, to the stories, to the doubt, to the anxiety that creeps in most of the time when you're not paying attention. The old thoughts, the old beliefs, the old things that are bringing you back into the old way of thinking, into the doubt, into the I can't, I won't happen, I don't know when, I don't know how. All these things is also part of the core first principle because you want to keep your mind aligned with the vision of the future that you want to create in your life now. So this is truly principle number one, to be able to impress your mind with what you want and to keep your mind clean. The second principle is to let go of how it's going to happen. And this is the tricky one because the mind struggle, the rational analytical part of us that wants to know how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, that wants everything to go according to the plan, to what you think is best and how you think it should happen and when you think it should happen, struggles to understand that, okay, I want that thing, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. Struggles to simply let go and let go of something greater, bring about what you want, bring about the synchronicity, the step, the, the, the inspiration, everything that's required for you to advance and to bring this into your life, right? So we got to be able to completely let go, to know that it's my job to impress my mind, right? Step one. But then how it's going to come, I got to have to surrender it to something greater. That greater part of me, my God self, the universe, whatever you want to call it, knows exactly the best way for it to manifest, materialize into my life. And I simply need to pay attention to take those inspired action, to do those things that comes spontaneously along the way, right? So I take one step a day that comes to me and I trust that it will happen. This is the faith, this is the trust part where people fall into the pitfall and they create a lot of doubt, a lot of control, a lot of anxiety is when they try to control the outcome, especially when things are not moving or not happening the way they think it should be happening or on a timeline that they think it should be happening. So the moment they start inviting doubt and anxiety and control and trying to control people and things and situations and so on, micromanage the universe, so to speak, they not only stirred away from step one, staying aligned with what you want, but they let that analytical mind completely jam the process, completely prevent them from having that natural flow, the passive resistance. Because now you try to over control everything. Now you're overthinking, now you're doubtful. And so you're making the process so much harder than it needs to be. So in principle one, you have to remain in the end vision, no matter what is happening now. In the principle two, you gotta find it in you 
to be able to let go and to trust that when the seed is planted, it will grow and that every seed has its own appointed time. You might not know how fast that seed will grow. It's not up to you. You might want it tomorrow, you know, in, in, at the end of the week. I get it. It can be so incredibly frustrating. But the more you're needy, the more it will take time, which brings me to core principle number three, releasing importance. And this is also a massive one because by default, what you want, you want it because it's important to you, because it's going to bring something into your life, right? So you don't want simply because whatever, right? But usually those big goals, those big things we want to create add into our life. We care. We want it now. We give it a lot of importance. We put it on a pedestal and we become needy. And this is often where our state of mind goes astray, right? It creates all that doubt, all that anxiety, all that being a control freak that I talked in part number two because of the extra excess importance we assign on things and people or situations that we want to create or bring in our life. So often what I see in myself or in my clients is that we live in a state of lack because we give so much importance to the things we want to create and when they're not here it creates all that tension all that contraction in us we obsess over it and every time we obsess on not having it or trying to figure out how we can bring it in our life we keep on adding more and more importance on the goal and the more importance you put on something the longer it's going to take and the longer it takes the more frustrated you become and this is when often you get the opposite of what you want. And this is why sometimes people come and like, I, I've done everything right, but I got the opposite. What happened? And often when I ask them some questions, it's simply because they cared so much over the top that life balanced out everything by bringing you the opposite of what you wanted. So you got to be able to, one, visualize what you want, impress your mind, two, let go of how it's going to come and let God, let the universe bring it to you and you just do what's required, what's spontaneous, what's inspired. And number three, release as much importance as you can. You want it, but you don't need it. Meaning you can be happy now, whether it's coming or not. You can be happy now, you can be excited now, you can be grateful now in your life, whether you get that thing, that person, that situation, that job, that car, that house, that home, that thing, you can be happy now. The way I do that is to contemplate, okay, well, if it doesn't happen, I'm going to be okay. But to really, not just, not, not just from a thought level, but from an emotional level to get that relief. If it doesn't happen, it's going to suck because I want it, right? But I'm going to be okay no matter what. And when I can get myself energetically there, usually I get that sense of relief. And this is when I usually start to care less. And the moment I start to care less, this is usually when I see the most things unfolding, the most momentum, the most synchronicity, the most movement in the direction of what I want. Notice where you put so much importance on your goals, on people, on situation, on event. And how do you feel when you think of those? Those are great indication that you've put too much importance on your goal. So practice releasing importance by simply learning to be grateful in this present moment, knowing that here and now I have everything and whether it happens or not, I'm going to be okay. Because again, it's about remaining in the end state, no matter what is happening right now. So if you cannot be happy, grateful, fulfilled, in love or whatever it may be, but you want that thing to fulfill that need, what you're sending out to the universe is more of, I'm not happy, I'm miserable, I'm anxious, I'm doubtful. Please fix me. Please give me something that will make this feeling go away. So you can see that you're miscommunicating what you want but it's because you're projecting your needs on that goal, on that outcome, with all that excess importance, all that weight. You made that goal your savior, so to speak. So drop the importance, trust the process, remain faithful to what you want. Keep impressing your mind with what you want and watch miracle and magic happens in your life. This is truly all it takes. It's simple, but it's not easy because the mind, the old program, the environment, life can get in the way. 
And so you have to learn to remain present. You have to learn to pay attention to your thoughts, to your emotions, and to trust something greater and to not get in the way. Let me know what you think down in the comment. As always, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Be well.